<laughs> Come on, girls. They're always chatting. Hi. Hi. Piggy in the middle. <laughs> Quite used to that, though, aren't you, Piglet? Um, so, I think, first of all, well done to our top three. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> what a day of competition we've had. The dressage certainly played its part, but we knew from walking the course, and I'm sure you guys did too, you had to leave the press conference quite early last night to go and have a whiz round again, didn't you? Walk the course. Um, but it has been a fabulous day, a fabulous day of sport, but to have five star back here in the UK on British soil has been phenomenal. I know you've really appreciated what Cheddington and Bicton have delivered, and it certainly has de delivered some amazing sport. We'll start um, in third place, going into tomorrow's show jumping, and one of the very last to go in the dressage yesterday, the only 10 in the dressage all day in uh, her dressage test. It was Pippa Funnel and uh, Billy Walk-On. Pippa, an amazing round today. Just talk us through it. Yeah, the dressage, it was very good to get a 10 and unfortunately it was for the first movement, so the lance went down the hill after the first movement. Um, but today, I mean, we're both horses, but absolutely delighted and elated with them. I mean, Billy Walk On, I can pretty much say it was probably one of the, the best five-star rides I've ever had. Um, he got into a rhythm. The only very slight thing I had was I just maybe just didn't quite travel enough to the white oxes at four and I ended up on five instead of four strides there otherwise I felt he was in a fabulous rhythm and, and just jumped and kept his ears pricked and made my job easy I just had to keep my brave pants on. <laughs> you said last night or in fact I think Piggy you said it last night you were going to stick a sparkler somewhere um, <laughs> Did you not see me come over the last fence? Yes. Because the sparkler went off in the woods. <laughs> and so that was the fastest bit of the course. I would have had 20 time falls if that sparkler had gone off. You need more sparklers. Um, but it was, it was phenomenal to watch. Do you think your first ride helped with the ride on Billy Walk-On? Because that must have given you confidence for the second ride to come. Yeah, I mean, it helped enormously. Um, Mare's Hope is a fabulous cross-country horse. And it helped to get a feel of the course um the the really positive thing that i took out of mayor's hopes ride was the fact that he felt so good the way he ran home and the one advantage i have and even piggy because i know she's a lot younger than me but she's still an old girl i think the one advantage we do have is from the the old format with producing horses for three days with steeplechase and that's how we had to get these horses fit for here and there has been a lot of work that's gone in to get those horses absolutely in tip-top condition because um, the one thing about this course it was every bit as tough as Burley terrain wise so you had to put the work in and the groundwork and and that gave me enormous confidence that he ran on home so well so it gave me the confidence to to keep plugging away with, with feel, Billy Walk On, because I knew he was as, as fit as the first horse. It was a tough track out there, and um, watching you ride on the first horse compared to the second horse, I think in your interview, your post-interview after the last round, you said that it made you feel so young and that you, you felt so... <laughs> Um, I'm not saying you're old, you said you're old. Um, you, it made you feel so young that you, were, you, you still ride with such amazing passion and, and feel, don't you? You love it. Um, well, I must admit, having done so much work with the horses to get them fit all the last two weeks, my main worry was whether I was going to be have the energy to ride two horses of that calibre around a five-star track. And it, it, if I'm honest... It, it has played on my mind a lot since Burley 2019, because obviously for me that was absolutely fabulous, but missing two years at this level. I did have it in my head. I, I have been quite anxious about the fact, am I really still up to it and am I going to enjoy it? And this morning, last night, no, I didn't enjoy it. And I thought, why am I doing it? And, and, and I honestly came into this event thinking, what am I going to do? after this <laughs> and I have been so elated by the rise that I think I'm going to have to keep going a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> I, think you said, 
I think you say that after every event. No, but I do think, I, all seriousness, I, I really think it's about time the, the FEI or British Eventing bring in a handicapped system <laughs> so that with age she'll just sit out. <laughs> so I think, I think maybe a time penalty a year, so I would really <laughs> Well, great to hear from Pippa. Very well done. Best of luck for the jumping tomorrow. Can I just, just, sorry, I'm not going to chat on, but all, on. the only thing I would like to say, Nick and Barbara Walkinshaw are here, the owners of Billy Walk On, and they have been such wonderful supporters of mine for many, many, many years. And it, it's meant so much that they've finally got a great round on a five-star cross-country track. So thank you, Nick and Barbara. Yeah, congratulations. The owners are so, so pivotal, and uh, Mary Sebastian, who is uh, Mayor's Hope owner as well, been monumental in, in uh, your career. Um, lying in second place and a climb after the dressage, and the first inside the time that we saw on the cross country, formidable back in June around this track, I mean, absolutely flew round, was Chilly Night with uh, Gemma Tatters or Gem. Talk us through your round because you just set off like a rocket and <laughs> just kept cruising. Hello. Yeah, Chilly Knight is uh, a little superstar. Um, he's like a little pony at home and doesn't feel anything special really. Um, <clears throat> you know, he never feels like a big rangy scopey horse. Um, and he walks out around at the start you know on a long rain just chilling out um and then i sort of said to him alfie come on we've got to jump around a five star and he's like okay <laughs> um and he just goes out of that start box pricks his little ears and stretches out over every jump and he goes from being a little pony to being a lion and he's just fabulous and we know each other so well um, you know, if I pull on the reins and say, whoa, he woes, and if I kick him and say, jump higher, he jumps higher. Um, he's just such a little dude, and yeah, love him to bits. He gave me the most fabulous, fabulous ride. A lovely story, which some of you might not know, is that not only is Chilly Knight a fabulous little horse, but by the 2015 Babington winner, Chilly Morning, the only stallion to win a five star in history so far. But also, um, you, you knew the mother pretty well as well. And Gemma was there when Chilly Knight was born. So she's known this um, little horse from a foal to five star. I mean, that's just an incredible feat in itself. Talk us through that because it's emotional. We saw mum at the end of the cross country running up and down. <laughs> Uh, like, a <laughs> like a madman, like a madman. Yeah, well, she is mad. <laughs> um, yeah, no, honestly, I mean, yesterday I was an emotional wreck after the dress It was ever so embarrassing. But um, there's a great meme know, going round as well, oh, which will be circulating. <laughs> um, anyway, you know, it really means a lot. You know, when we've had them right from the beginning, and do you know what the expression on his face from the minute he was born to now has not changed? Is prick straight away? Um, it's just, yeah, he's just a yes a yes man and it, it does mean a hell of a lot you know we've worked really hard on his dressage he's not natural on the flat and you don't know what he tries so hard um and we've worked really hard at it and he came out yesterday and did his best test ever and then today he's just flown around with his ears bricked again and you made it look very easy i mean you guys as mark said you know the the cream rose to the top and it certainly has three girls at the top of the leaderboard <laughs> Um, Pippa made it look easy, Gem, right from the get-go, I mean, it's a big track out there, let's not underestimate, it was a proper five-star. Yeah. Um, learning, did you, did you learn, I meant to ask you, Pippa, this as well, learning from the four-star that was here back in June, did you then think and realise that you had to keep that fitness level up, because it requires a very, very fit horse round here? Oh yeah, no. Um, I think what I learnt, and I don't know whether you girls guys were the same, is what I learnt is actually you have to just let the horses settle into a rhythm up the hills, and not try and think about the clock going up the hills. So just let them find their own way up all the hills, and then down the hills, and where you can let them run, you let them run as as fast as they want. 
And I think that was the, the key thing because I think horses get disheartened when you start kicking them up a hill. I definitely would. I'm happy to walk that one, but run it. Am I on? Yeah. Um, no, I really agree with that. I tried to really, really hard not to let the clock um, rule my mind at all when I was going round. And I know we went very quickly, but actually I never pushed Alfie up the hills once. I just let him go at the speed that he wanted up the hills. The only time I really said to him, let's finish now was after the, the second last brush, so third last fence. Um, I just said to him, go on then, go up the hill, and he stuck his nose out and galloped up that hill like a racehorse. Um, so, yeah, um, I just tried not to let the clock rule my mind at all on the way round and just ride the horse I had underneath me. We'll now hear from the leader, but just one point I want to make. In 2019, it was the very last year that we had a five-star. This lady won one of them and this lady won the other. So our Badminton and Burley, current five-star UK winners, um, are here on the podium after the cross country. But our 2019 Badminton winner, Veneer Kamira, she was 14 when she won Badminton. She's now 16, but after the dressage, you said, it doesn't matter. She's, not, she's had a couple of quiet years, in, and now the five-star back here, um, it has meant a lot to you as riders to get those horses back because otherwise they would have missed so much in their life career. I know, we are, we are so unbelievably grateful for Bicton and the whole team and I know we've said it a lot but you can't say it too much because for these wonderful older horses, we've all spoken about it lots before, but to miss two full seasons out of their their um, careers and from being 14 running well at badminton and Burley and they're not tennis rackets or footballs we can't put them in the cupboard and do nothing it's been a, it's been really quite a hard time for owners and for you know these horses to you know Tilly Bean she doesn't run very much Vinay Kamira she doesn't really do one day events so I, I came here you know just hoping her experience from previous years was going to was going to carry her through from today but I, I knew how to get her fit um, but you're still in the back of your mind I hope she remembers I hope I remember how to ride I hope she remembers how to go and um, but she's like come on mother she puts her nose on the snout on the floor and she truffle snuffles the whole way around and she's like come on let's go and we don't give anything much height but we're flying along she looks at the flags and the moment I try and sort of slur her up a bit or think let's just give this a bit more time she's like no nope. <laughs> we're going and so you know the, the confidence to having a horse you know like that that knows a job she wants to do it she's a gritty hardy hardy little mare she's um i've joked before saying she's a pain in the ass 362 days a year but those few days that you've got a, a big competition and really need something with guts and heart is when she just comes to her own and and, you know, I'm so very proud of her, so very proud for Trevor Dickens as well. It's owned all, all, all her career and what a fabulous horse to have had. And what, you know, these are the moments, you know, she's been a Burley horse. She's been second at Burley twice and fifth once. It's been so sad for her not to have, um, you know, had a moment. That was sort of one event that I was hoping for her to maybe have had a go at but you know she's she's made for hills for terrain for grit and heart and she did it exactly how she always did it today so i'm very proud i can keep talking <laughs> um i sorry okay. i wasn't listening <laughs> Captain Mark. Captain Mark was just filling me in with a bit of information here. To the Barn are uh, giving an award at this five star for the best cross country round of the entire day. Um, and that is, do you want to explain? Piggy French. <laughs> Piggy Mark wins the best rider cross country round of the day. So well done, Piggy. I'm gonna You're going to cry. No, don't do it. Gemma, Gemma will say, right, don't cry. Um, no, she looked, she looked brilliant. And you, she's feisty. We, we know yeah. she's feisty. When the course sets off, it sets off over the first few fences, but you run downhill to the third. And do, does that set her off on a bit of a mission? Do you, do you have to do quite a lot of work? Or did from three to four really help get her back on her bottom again? 
Um, she never really gets back onto her bottom. We're, we're always that way, but it's been a, a partnership over years of, of trust. Um, and it did take years of trust, to be honest. It's not something that you love a horse's balance to be down there, but she's, she's honest and she, she knows exactly. She's very calculated. And as much as she runs downhill, she's, a, she's actually a very light, you know, athletic, feisty little horse that you can, you, you can pull on the rein and you can stop her quite quickly. She doesn't carry on hoovering on past, past the distances and things. So you can, you know, sit your body weight back a little bit more to slow her down and she will do it slow within two strides. So as much as you, you have to sit well back with long reins and um, feel like you're sat out the back on very long reins, um, she she knows what she's doing so it's just been a question of partnership and trust and learning to accept the balance over the years and a testament to you as well to change and adapt to each horse because it's not a not a way that everybody wants their horses to go in that in that sort of plain landing mode but it suits her and you have to adapt yeah and, and she's fast you know she's fast and but she she knows what she's doing she's never been a, um, a, a stupid horse she's always kept her brain um, and like I say, it's just a years of, of trust and, and understanding. Pippa, you, you mentioned it earlier. Um, Piggy, I think you, you did too. I think you said in your, um, you probably won't remember because the adrenaline was so high, but you said at the end of your cross country, this is probably one of the toughest five stars that you've ridden round undulation wise so far. Is that, would you all agree? Yeah. yeah, and I think it was really interesting. It, it walked like that as well. I think when we all walked the course, we hadn't even got to our two-minute marker, and we were like, "Oh my word, we've we've come up to three steep hills already." And you know, I think we we've all got experience. Pipsy's got lots of experience, and, <laughs> <laughs> and we've ridden round um, Burley you know a few times now and you get to learn with the experience how to how to ride the land there and the layout and the the terrain of it and and i was just you know really sort of taken quite back of the of how intense the first four minutes of this track was and it felt more like a one day event track of the 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 steepness of the, the rises and the you know having to you know move move up the hills move to those big white oxes get them right back coming down the hill there was a it, there was a lot that we were doing in the first four minutes where usually at burley and babington you you've run a few minutes on very flatter terrain that lets the horses sort of breathe and get into a rhythm a little bit easier and it wasn't until i i found that you jumped the coffin and i wish i can't remember what number that was was some a minute five yeah somewhere over there um, that you thought, Whoa, and actually breathed and weren't thinking of kicking up a hill or coming down a hill or turning to something. And so drop, dropped your reins to lie on the neck and just think, okay, now just try and find a bit of a rhythm and, and, and ease off. And, I, and, you know, then you had to run a mile all the way up a very gradual hill. So it was, it was as demanding, definitely, as, as I've ever ridden round. Um, of you know for a horse of of stamina and to keep going on again but after the last water again you know the for the horses mentally you're passing the collecting ring you're passing where the finish was you've already done plenty we've already been gone for nine minutes and it's been hard work for them and then you go away from the water jump again up another slight climb to do another you know two and a bit minutes and I think again horsemanship wise of just mentally letting them get out of the the wood and i gave her a kick and she she tried and i remember thinking go on girl you know good girl you're doing really well and i think you do speak out loud you know i definitely did yes <laughs> you do don't you just, i was like you're doing really well <laughs> yeah they, they mentally are just slightly thinking home's there you know surely we've done enough and this is you know where the hardiness and this real quality athletes you know keep just driving on and I just uh, I did say to her go on girl you're doing really well come on we're nearly there just to try and you know mentally encourage us both you know come on and <laughs> and but such clever course really glad it's not just me. <laughs> <laughs> such clever course designing as well to let you be able to get home you know those two and a half minutes of nothing too big and hedge fences so that you could really if you got to that 
that point and you still had a horse, you could get home and get them home comfortably and happy, even if the petrol gauge was, was you know, getting a little bit low. So all, all credit to, to him there. But I thought it was really interesting. I, thought, I think we all learned a lot about the terrain and, and uh, you know, the horses and everything. And it was interesting. Well, thank you very much to uh, our top three. I think we'll throw it to the floor now and uh, just see if you, any of you got any questions for either Pippa, Piggy or Gemma. If you have, put your hand up and a microphone will find its way to you. Um, Piggy, how do you think that you got the top? I'll answer that question because I told her I gave her so much advice over the years. And I gave her too much. Yeah. True story. How did I? Yeah, how did you get to the top? Just... Apart from Pippa, how did you get to the top? Because. Pipsy, thankfully, just took one extra pull coming down to the last bed, so it's a little bit slow at the way, and that's the only reason why I'm there. But I think after tomorrow, we might be musical chairing a little bit more again, but, but we'll, tr we'll try. Um, for all three of you, how did it feel when you finished the last job? That's a very good question. Very good question. So the question was, how, do you did, how did you all feel when you jumped the last jump? Absolutely over the moon. So proud of my horse and my team and us as a partnership and just the most amazing, incredible feeling. And a lot of relief as well. Like a huge <laughs> relief, you know, felt terribly sick this morning, very nervous. And so the, re the relief is, is ginormous. Relief and, and pride, you know, of, of what these wonderful little animals that you do so much with put, you know, give you and you know to do it like i felt mine did it today you just you know you you are a bit emotional when you first finish and you're just beaming of of pride for the lovely little horses yeah i think i think it's probably my apprehension and nerves really um it's a wonderful it's a brilliant sport it's a great sport but i think the nerves and apprehension in the morning is always wanting to have a safe ride and, and give your horses a good trip and that they've enjoyed themselves and exactly what these guys have said. Just relief and pride and yeah, very relieved that I managed to breathe and get to the finish on both horses. And you can go to badminton next year now, Pixie. <laughs> yeah. So do you have a favourite horse? Oh. Oh. I, I, I can't really. No, no. They, 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 you're so, they're a, more that you're, you, you're very fond, fond of. I could never. I would never go up to one and say you're my favourite. Um, and some are you're more fond of for different reasons. Like I absolutely love Vanilla Camira for what she's given me. She's probably the hard, one of the hardest ones I have at home to manage and ride. And does she make me feel like I can ride really well? No. <laughs> and she's just a, you know a trickier horse to manage and to have. So, um, but she's one of my most fondest, obviously, of what what she's given me. So it's hard. To, no favourites. Um, this is for all three of you. Was there like a specific moment in your life that you, like you knew that eventing was what you wanted to do? <laughs> I always wanted. To, yeah, to, I always to wanted it, yeah. to do it from the beginning. I think um, from probably the age of five or six. To be honest, when I went to badminton with my parents for the first time, it's just like that's always what I wanted to do, and I definitely did not want to be at school. I had, I, had, I had no brain cells either. So no brain cells, good. absolutely useless at everything else in my life. The only thing I can do well most of the time is see a stride. Anything else, I'm very bad at. So it was lucky. Piggy, you wanted to do it. Pip, is that your phone? That's my Oh, what was the question? Um, <laughs> long, many years ago, you wanted to... Well, I, wasn't, I, I actually wasn't that useless at school. I wasn't that bad. 
I did get caught smoking a few times. <laughs> but, um, I did always want to. Uh, did I want to move out? I just wanted to spend my life with. I was a, a pony mad little girl like probably a lot of you guys are, and I just wanted to have a life with horses. And I, I think it, it wasn't I particularly wanted to do an event, it was just that coming through ponies and my first horse ended up going down that route. And, not sure whether I've loved it ever since, probably. but no, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful life to, to be working with these horses, and it's such fun. Um, what was the horse that started your like eventing career off? Well, mine was a mine was a little horse, a little blue roan horse called Sir Barnaby, and he was my pony club horse. So he, when I dreamt on him, when I was doing pony club teams, I dreamt one day I'd love to ride at badminton and that was the horse that took me there. So you guys with your ponies and horses, you never know what you have. <laughs> you might be there, so keep working it. Hey, um, I think mine was a, a little horse called Lloyd's Gamble that, and he was when I was about 15 years old. And um, he was, a lovely little horse that mum had found because he'd, he'd given up jumping and I think for the first few times that, that I rode him he stopped to dump me at the cross pole and my first B100 event I went to I had two stops and fell off um, in the trochaner. Um, and that, those are the days that you could get back on and go and, and a year later he won his first red rosette a first um, first place and actually went on to do um, JRNs and, and won quite a few red rosettes and it, it taught me, it stamped on me quite a bit from an early thing that you can, how much work you can do and how just because it starts not so great. I think he taught me the most and was the most, he ended up being such a fabulous little pony and my, and my best mate and I loved him to bits but he definitely gave me the drug. Um, I think mine, uh, I want to say Justice Quest just because um, we had to build a real partnership. He came to me when he was a little bit older and he had not had the best time in his life. Um, he used to run with his head literally in the air with his ears in my face. And we went from jumping around novices and actually at home not even be able to jump a cross pole. We had to work really hard. Um, and he really never wanted to jump any sort of left-hand corner or skinny. And we had to work really hard at getting him to realise he could jump through flags and he ended up jumping around badminton and burley and winning two young rider team gold medals so he was uh, a really fabulous horse for me uh yeah a question for you all um on the course today what fence or element did you find the most challenging oh i could hear myself over there as well it's really disconcerting <laughs> Um, I, I didn't, yeah, Candy, I, I was really worried of the um, fence nine, eight, nine coming down the steep slope, having the control to do those two um, nasty little corners. Um, it's just getting balance, control, getting your stride right, you know, but there were so many elements of that that was. <laughs> Is it? Is it? Oh my gosh, we're echoing over there. Um, that was, I was really worried about that one. She did it very well though, Pix. She was a good girl. Yeah, she was, she was a good girl. Um, I think, uh, yes, the same the same fence, although I was probably slightly less worried on Chilly Knight as he's very adjustable. Um, I I actually, if I look back on my round, the, the most difficult fence for me was actually the last water where we had our only little um, sort of half whoopsie um, where he thought he'd done all three elements very well. He was, he's a fabulous little boy and he thought, let's go, mum. And I'm like, no, there's another jump. <laughs> and at the last minute, he realised there was another jump and just picked his legs up and put them back down again <laughs> and jumped up through the flags, um, which is, you know, he, he's an amazing little horse to do that. So that was my um, kind of um, little whoopsie moment, as it were. Yeah, um, the same into the arena. I learned a lot from my first horse. He was very keen setting off Mare's Hope and um, he... I thought I got him back enough at the house at the top of the hill and I didn't do enough whoa, whoa, whoa down the bank and so I had to do a circle so that taught me a lot for the second horse that I realised I had to be as quiet as I could be at the house and um, it's the one thing I did watch was Gemma um, coming down that slope going <laughs> and I thought that's the way you've got to do it to, to, to be able to get the control to get around that turn so I learned from that and then 
the other fence which was a little bit um, hairy for me which a bad riding I would say but I underestimated after the as Piggy was saying the mile long gallop up the hill to the four arrowheads in the row in the row in a row our horses are, are so good on lines now but I just slightly underestimated how much he had opened his dis opened his stride and so the middle one um, the third of the four arrowheads I, I had sort of ended up on three and a half sw sort of swinging off and <laughs> That's, that's where I think probably, I don't know whether it was my age or the old girl or <coughs> me, suddenly then it made me go to my hand over the last element because I thought, whoa, well, come back here, and then I interfered too much. So that was my one last, well, the, the worst moment. But I think, I think did, you, did you learn anything for, from watching some of, it, some of that I, over the fort? Because they were making up ground yeah, over certainly those then, arrowheads. So. Certainly from seeing Oliver on the first horse. I know that horse is strong and... Um, you know, very open in his distance, but that horse literally, went, well, he went down actually on four, didn't he? And then three, and three, three, really. And then obviously he had a little tumble. So I certainly learned um, that actually I didn't need to push for that distance, although it walked as though you were going to need to ride it forward. In, in fact, actually, we had to sit still and just wait for the horses to just see what they had to do and, and do their footwork. I think, unfortunately, we've probably got one time for one more question. Do you think is that is that all right? One more. Um, I think Dan here had their hand up for. Uh, has she, okay, two more. Um, certainly, you've had your hand up for nearly half an hour. Um, so yeah, question. Did did you um, find the water jumps um, ch challenging for your horses? Number twenty-two, the NFU mutual one. Did you find that very challenging? So the question, the question was, did you find the NFU water challenging for your horses? Um, yeah, it, it was a hard fence. It, it rode, I thought it rode bigger than I thought. It was a yeah. big, big drop going in. in. Definitely. Really yeah. big drop yeah. going in. And, and, but I think it, it was a, a, I thought it was a good example of, of Mark's building you know the horses you know it was clear where the horse providing we rode it well the horses could eye up where they were going and to me I think in the spring I, I felt the the question in the spring coming out of that water was very tough because I don't think the horses could read read the fence and and, and there's nothing worse in my mind when you you get you sort of ride on the line but they can't quite read and, and get to see look where they're going and I think it was clear but it was a big fence wasn't it I think they all agree on, on that one. I think just. I'd love to say a story about the first water yesterday walking around, but I don't think I can with all these go kids. Go on, go on. <laughs> well, have you got a clean version? I have. I have to be. Well, let me tell you a story. Oh, quick. Just a quick one because I have to just say. Do you, want, do you want to tell me first? No, it's all right. It's all right. Because it's nature. It's nature. No. <laughs> but I have to say. I do have to say that one of my dogs is in season and I was walking the, the first water and oh, Lucinda no. Green was walking with me and I was concentrating the first water and I looked I turned around and I couldn't believe what was happening <laughs> and I was with Chris Bartle as well and I said you're just going to have to go and, uh, and walk on because we're going to have to wait <laughs> and, and then believe it or not I, and I have a huge thanks and I was said I would buy them a bottle of wine but the, I don't know when anyone's noticed but the mounted police have been here all week and they were on their feet at the water and bless them they said they would hold the dogs <laughs> <laughs> and they met up with us later so the first water was tricky so you're, gonna, you're gonna have more puppies in nine weeks time no i'm gonna ring the vet <laughs> um i think just one more question down down here oh my he did try and pick the dogs up and put them in the water. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I know, I know. One more question, Danny. Go, go, go. Piggy, yesterday, how did you feel like when you came first in dressage? Oh, well, it was very exciting when I was first for a short time because this old bird went and got some tins. Um, oh, no, I was over the moon. Um, I was over the moon anyway of how she went, her own personal performance I was very excited about. And so lots of, lots of 
pony parts, but when they announced it and I've gone into the lead and it was 25 and that's a really cool school for her, so I think I punched the air like I'd already won and was like <laughs> well excited, but yeah, it was a special moment. Okay, well I think it's probably about time that we wrap up this... Uh... <laughs> Pip, Pip is saying sorry. Um, so going through into tomorrow's show jumping, of course the final horse inspection. There's not one pole separating the top three. Not to put any pressure on you guys. Not one pole separating you. All right, we'll mention it a few more times tomorrow. But in third place, going into the cross country, is Great Britain's Pippa Funnel with Billy Walk on on 28.7. What is that? In the show jumping, in the show jumping. In second place going into the show jumping, Gemma Tazadorf of Great Britain, Chilly Night on 27.9. But the piggy in the middle, she goes into the show jumping on a dressage score, 25.5. It's Great Britain's Piggy March. Thank you very much, ladies. Good luck tomorrow. And enjoy the rest of your day here at the Chillington Victim Five Star. Thank you very much.